The widely circulated claim that it takes 48 hours to boil water for startup has made the Liaoning's power system controversial. As China's first aircraft carrier, is its conventional power system really as backward as outsiders claim? In fact, the Liaoning's power system contains unknown technical wisdom. Through unique design and optimization, this questionable system has demonstrated amazing reliability and durability in actual combat. So what are the features of the power system of this warship that ushered in the era of Chinese aircraft carriers? Why did China choose this power scheme? The abandoned giant ship that drifted away from its home country and eventually became a symbol of the Chinese nation's maritime power has gathered the wisdom and sweat of countless people in the birth of the Liaoning. At an auction in 1998, a Chinese businessman named Su Zengping auctioned off the unfinished Soviet carrier with a full load displacement of 67,000 tons and a hull length of 306 M for $20 million. 2002, after 627 days and 15,200 nautical miles, the weather-beaten ship finally arrived at the port of Dalian. Subsequently, CSIC Dalian Shipyard started a seven-year system modification project. The challenges faced by the conversion team were enormous, not only to complete the unfinished parts, but also to upgrade the ship into an aircraft carrier that meets modern operational requirements. During the conversion, the team upgraded the ship's hull, deck, carrier aircraft support, and other systems while retaining the original power system. For steam turbines and eight pressurized boilers were successfully installed, and the ship was equipped with a skidding takeoff deck, enabling it to carry 24J, 15 fighters, and multiple helicopters. In September 2012, the ship was officially named Liaoning and became China's first aircraft carrier. More importantly, through the renovation of Variag, China gained valuable experience in aircraft carrier construction, laying a solid foundation for the subsequent development of aircraft carriers. The power system is the heart of an aircraft carrier and its performance directly determines the maneuverability of this sea fortress. The Liaoning uses a conventional power system consisting of four high-efficiency steam turbines and eight pressurized boilers. Although this system has been called backward by some Western media, its reliability and practicality have stood the test of battle. Whether nuclear or conventional power, the basic principle is to generate high-temperature, high-pressure steam by heating water to push the turbine to do work. The difference between the two is the heat source. Nuclear power uses a nuclear reactor, while conventional power uses heavy oil combustion. It's like a giant kettle. The key is not what is used to boil the water, but how to utilize this energy more efficiently. Liaoning ship using heavy oil fuel has a unique advantage. This is known as oil residue fuel. The price is only half of diesel and has a high calorific value. Non-volatile, not easy to explode. A refueling of 8,000 tons of heavy oil, not only low cost, but also to ensure the safety of aircraft carriers in the vast ocean navigation. The hotly debated 48-hour warm-up is actually a misunderstanding. In fact, the Liaoning ship from cold start to have sailing conditions in only 10 hours. 48 hours refers to the time needed to reach maximum power. This is like a car from startup to normal driving only a few minutes but to let the engine to reach the best performance state needs a longer time to warm up. In terms of maintenance benefits, the conventional power system shows significant advantages, with annual maintenance costs only one-fifth of those of nuclear-powered carriers and a design life of more than 30 years. In terms of actual operation, the Liaoning's power system is stable and reliable. Although it takes two hours to accelerate from cruising speed to the maximum speed, this feature is in line with the Chinese Navy's positioning of the carrier, which is not to pursue high-speed maneuvering, but to focus on the play of comprehensive combat capability. Facts have proved that this set of power system fully meets the needs of the aircraft carrier as a maritime maneuvering combat platform. The strength of an aircraft carrier lies not only in the power of steel, but also in the people who drive this sea fortress. Since 2006, the Chinese Navy has been selecting outstanding pilots throughout the military to train the backbone of the future carrier aircraft takeoff and landing. These elite pilots, known as Golden Helmets, will face the biggest challenge of their lives. The modification mode is a training path with Chinese characteristics, and these pilots, who originally flew fighter planes at land-based airports, 
need to completely change their flying habits that have been formed over the years. At land-based airports, pilots retract the throttle and slow down when landing. But on an aircraft carrier, they must push the throttle and accelerate to ensure that they can quickly return to flight if they can't hook up to the blocking cables. This counterintuitive maneuver requires pilots to override past experience and re-establish muscle memory. Meanwhile, technicians are pushing the limits. And under the leadership of academician Ma Weiming, China has successfully developed electromagnetic catapult technology, making it the second country to master the technology after the United States. This technology has shortened the preparation time for carrier aircraft takeoff from 24 hours for traditional steam catapults to just a few hours, dramatically improving the carrier's combat effectiveness. Actual combat drills are the best standard for testing results. The Liaoning has broken through the first island chain and started training in the Western Pacific Ocean, demonstrating an impressive comprehensive combat capability. From the initial single ship training to the later formation of coordinated operations, the combat effectiveness of the Liaoning ship has been continuously improved in practice. In day-to-day takeoff and landing training, the pilots have gradually mastered the combat skills under various complex weather and sea conditions. From the initial fumbling and learning to today's skillful use, the Liaoning and its carrier aircraft unit have completed in just a few years what other countries may take decades to accomplish. The progress of science and technology never ends and China's aircraft carrier business is moving toward even higher goals. With the development of a new generation of supercritical steam technology, the energy conversion efficiency of the power system will be significantly improved. A brand new fuel system is being tested, which will drastically shorten the warm-up time and bring the carrier's rapid response capability to a higher level. The modularized design of the power plant leaves ample room for future upgrades. The research team is exploring a number of cutting-edge technologies, including the application of new materials, intelligent control systems, and integrated electropropulsion. These technological breakthroughs will not only enhance the carrier's combat performance, but also drive the development of the entire shipbuilding industry. From Liaoning to Shandong to Fujian, each generation of aircraft carriers has brought together new technological breakthroughs. Liaoning created the era of China's aircraft carriers, Shandong realized independent construction, and Fujian is equipped with electromagnetic catapult system with world advanced level. This generational leap shows the amazing speed of progress of China's shipbuilding industry. The label made in China is changing from quantity to quality, and the improvement of aircraft carrier construction capacity reflects the overall leap of China's industrial system. From the initial reliance on modification to the current completely independent research and development, China has mastered all the key technologies of aircraft carrier design and construction. This progress is not only reflected in the hardware facilities, but also in the improvement of soft power. The construction of the Talon Echelon is also encouraging. A new generation of carrier pilots is growing up, combining technical training with innovative thinking and constantly exploring new tactical applications. The technology research and development team continues to expand, and young researchers are contributing their wisdom in various fields. This dynamic team is the solid foundation for the development of China's aircraft carrier business. As the country's strength grows, the development path of Chinese aircraft carriers will be even more open. Whether it is the upgrading of the power system or the enhancement of combat capability, China has shown firm confidence and sufficient strength. This is not only the progress of military equipment, but also the inevitable choice of a big country towards the deep blue.